Hey, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's a weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. The show is broadcast live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. But if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show and um, then post it in our archives later so you can watch at your convenience. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of your recordings. Both the live show and the archive recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the top topics we have on the show. Uh, for those of you not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries in Nebraska. Um, this would be similar to your state library in, in other states. Uh, and we are the state, uh, the agency for all types of libraries. So you will find things on our show that are for public libraries, academics, K-12, co uh, corrections, museums, archives, special, et cetera, et cetera. Um, really our only criteria for the show is that it is something um, that um, about libraries, something that libraries are doing, uh, cool services or resources we think they sh could be using. Um, we sometimes have library commission staff come on and do presentations about things we specifically are offering here via the Nebraska Library Commission. Um, we also bring in guest speakers from um, across the Nebraska and across the country actually to um, be on the show sometimes. All right, so before we do get into today's show, I know we have um, a lot of Nebraska people um, um, that did sign up today. I just want to um, pop over to our Library Commission website and remind you all about, um, we are still in the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, things are um, getting worse in some areas, uh, it's changing all the time. And on our Library Commission website for libraries, we do have a post here um, pinned to the top of our website, so we'll always be there at the very top for you, of um, resources that we have for libraries. Above that, you'll also see a list, a link here for a, a list of um, what we're trying to collect information from Nebraska libraries, mostly publics, um, but anyone who will you know, tell us um, who's open, who's closed, uh, special accommodations libraries might be making, curbside pickup, Wi-Fi in the parking lot. Um, now we also have libraries reclosing again because there have been outbreaks, you know, new outbreaks in areas, so things are always changing. So keep an eye on that list. If you want to know what's going on with our Nebraska libraries, um, let us know here at the commission if you need to update your information there. Um, but I just want to show you here on our uh, pandemic resources page, we have um, a list of the links, we have some maps, we have a form you can use, or you can email us to let us know what your library is doing. But this subpage here, we have some resources, um, both for libraries and for just people. Um, if you have someone in your library who wants to know about financial help, unemployment, uh, schooling for my kids, et cetera, et cetera, um, we've gathered um, lots of resources here where we're always updating. Um, but I just wanna highlight the one here, what about my library? This is specifically for um, you as librarian in your library, what you can be doing, some um, things to help you out. Um, we are keeping an eye on things. Uh, if there's new webinars or um, resources that are put up or a new, a new um, something recorded or new information, we try to update it here on our website. So information about health and safety with your library, specifically information for school libraries. Um, if you're holding board meetings, now remember, if you're not from Nebraska, make sure you pay, you check your state's rules about some of these things. There may be different statutes in different states regarding this, but this is specific to Nebraska. Um, examples of other libraries who have opened and how they're doing it with their policies. So a lot of good resources here um, for you to use. Uh, next um, is coming up tomorrow, I believe. There is a webinar from the Realm Project. That is the um, project being done with OCLC and IMLS where they're actually testing COVID as they put it on particular materials that libraries um, may use. And tomorrow afternoon, I'm just bringing up the information over here. Oh, Collections and facilities caring for your resources during COVID-19 is the name of the a webinar tomorrow afternoon, two o'clock. Um, they will be live streaming it. So if you go through this realm, um, they're always they're updating their information on there a lot. That is um, coming up just tomorrow after 2 p.m. Central Time. I should clarify that. So um, that'd be something to look into. So I just want to make sure everyone is aware we have this information up there. If you have any resources you think we should be adding to it, anything you've heard about, let us know. Let our reference staff know and we'll keep that up to date for you. 
All right, so on to today's show. Today's show, um, um, you're going to be hearing from me. I am, um, in addition to being the host of our Encompass Live show here, I am the Library Development Director here at the Nebraska Library Commission. And as um, in that uh, capacity in the Library Commission, we handle um, many of the grants that the Library Commission gives out to libraries um, for different services, for different um, purposes. Uh, there are other grants beyond what we do as well here, though. So I wanted to um, I get lots of questions from libraries and library staff asking, you know, what else can I apply for? Um, what if the grant, when you, your grants are done or the money's run out or whatever the situation is, um, what else can I apply for? So I decided to gather some of that information together. Um, some of it came from uh, a meeting of, of some of our librarians a couple of years ago. Someone else did, uh, another librarian in the state did put together um, a, uh, a handout with some great resources that I've been updating over the year over the last couple of years and I've used that to create to put, gather some information so uh, just some other funding opportunities that you might not know about or you might not think about in your in your library um, especially now um, libraries are always struggling with budgets there's always um, never enough money to do everything you want to do <laughs> uh, and especially now with the pandemic going on many like maybe uh, municipalities may be struggling with funding coming in uh, struggling with tax revenues any sort of revenue coming into the city to the cities and municipalities which makes everyone's budgets need to be cut in uh, potentially so uh, that is something that some of you may be dealing with may be struggling with and know you're going to have to struggle with with your budgets as they come up so uh, it's even more um, imperative of libraries to get creative with being able to find funding and ways that they can um, supplement what they do get from uh, their, their their local municipality. Uh, what I have done is I've created a web page um, that is uh, grants for Nebraska libraries. Now, um, this is a work in progress. I just started working on it recently, so you won't find any it's, it, um, anything linked to this yet. We're st I'm still figuring out where it will fit in in the whole Library Commission web page. But if you do go to the URL here that I have here, um, it is live though, nlc.nebraska.gov slash grants slash grants.aspx. That will bring you right to it. Um, as soon as we figure out where it will live officially and um, it becomes live and part of this of our website, I will let you guys all know um, where, um, if it ends up moving somewhere else. Um, so this is, a lot of this is based, as I said, on um, a handout that was created for um, from our Southeast Library System. Uh, for a uh, workshop that they did a couple of years ago. Um, some of it is from resources that I've been keeping an eye on for libraries. Um, as I said, as a library development director, part of my job is make, getting this information out to you as best as I can with announcements and reminders and things. But I decided that we needed a page for it. We needed to just, rather than me just having it out there and people can find it, let's try and gather as much as we can into one place. As I was working on this, and you guys may have noticed if you've gone looking for grant resources, there is no, unfortunately, no one-stop shopping for all grants might, that might be available to libraries, whether you're public school, academic, whatever. Uh, there's just, and what I've discovered is it's not that they're not out there, it's just there's so many opportunities, so many things you could potentially apply for. Some of them very specific that say this is for libraries, and some for other things, like uh, some, um, grants for municipalities or for cities that listed somewhere in there is any city agency, any city department can apply for this grant and get, the, get um, the funding. Library being a city agency and a public library can use it. Um, some grants are just for nonprofit organizations. Some are for your, you're in a certain geographic area, you were in your city, your state. Um, we only give grants in this state or in this um, range of states. Uh, some of them are for certain sizes of communities. Uh, so um, there's lots and lots of criteria to look at, but there's lots of resources out there. So this list, as I, I put a little note here at the top here, just to start off, it is not exhaustive. It is not everything out there. It's really hard to gather everything out there. But these are some ones that I know that um, I recommended to libraries and they've been successful with. Libraries themselves have recommended them as ones that they have used themselves here in Nebraska. Um, for those of you not here in Nebraska, you'll, some of these are specific to only Nebraska libraries, but some of these are um, outside of Nebraska as well. So just you know, pay attention to the criteria and the information for each one of the grants and uh, 
you will be able to find the ones that you could apply for. All right. So um, I've got this so far just broken up into grants at the top here and then at the bottom resources for finding funding, places for other grants that you can find. And we're just going to go through this from top to bottom. Um, as I said, this is a uh, work in progress. I may add some other grants that I find out about um, that I decide might need to be highlighted and pushed out to you guys. I do as new grants are announced or deadlines come up, I try to push it out on our blog library commission blog and our social media that we have so you can also pay attention there to see if anything new comes up you know that just isn't listed on here um and while we're um doing the show today if you guys have any any ideas any grants you've applied for any um resources that you know of that other libraries may um benefit from uh type into the questions section let me know uh we want to share um with everybody what might be out there that um everyone can benefit from if there's anything I've you know missed here. So uh, we'll start right here at the top is I did mention the library commission grants that we offer. This is the ones that we offer here through our library development department and they are open right now actually and um, well some of them are open right now. <laughs> we'll get to that. And I'm not going to go into huge detail on this. We did do a session all about um, these, these specific grants just a couple of weeks ago in September. So the recording for this is up um, on our website. But I just want to let remind you that these are available. We have continuing education grants. That um, Now, there's actually two versions of that going on right now. Um, today is the deadline to... Um, apply for the continuing education grants specifically to attend next week's Iowa Library Association virtual conference. Um, their annual conference, they decided to go virtual completely. It's next Thursday, October 15th. You can still register for that. Um, but we decided here, as a, we call that flash grant. Uh, it was a very quick thing. We just got it set up last week. Um, so if you look on our blog, you'll find links and information about that. Today, midnight today, is the deadline to apply for that grant just to attend next week's Iowa Library Association online conference. Library, uh, library staff, board members, are all welcome to apply for that. Also, today is the deadline to apply for our Youth Grants for Excellence. These are for any of your children's services or children's programs you want to do. Uh, Sally Snyder is our um, youth grant youth librarian here, and she is in charge of those. So today is a deadline both for the Youth Grants for Excellence and the special CE grant for attending next week's Iowa Library Association Conference. We also have our CE and training grants open for just any purpose that you want. Um, if you want to attend a, a, a conference of some sort, if you want to bring in someone to do a presentation at your library that's specific to them, um, attending conferences, um, online resource, online um, workshops and things, you can apply for that there. So this is open right now and the deadline for that is December 9th. Our internship grants are also open right now. Their de the deadline for that is November 10th. This is for, um, we will give um, up to $1,000 to a library to hire, basically hire an extra staff person for whatever you need them to do sometime next year in 2021. The fourth grant we have listed here is our library improvement grants. Right now, we do not have those open because we are we don't know yet what our federal budget our budget will be from the federal government. We get federal LSTA, Library Service Technology Act funds for this grant. And right now, we do not know what that will be. So we do not know if we will have the money to do those grants. So uh, keep your eyes open to, uh, for announcements about that. But those are the grants that we offer here through the Library Commission. Like I said, we did a session earlier about this. You want more information about, um, about it. Uh, if you have questions about the CE grants, contact Holly Duggan here at the Library Commission. Internship grants, that's me. I'm in charge of those, as well as the library improvement grants. And youth grants would be Sally Snyder. So um, going on to other things that are just not the Library Commission grants. The, the Kreutz Bennett Donor Advice Fund is a great resource for our little libraries, our small and rural libraries. You have to have a popular, the first criteria, you have to be in a community with a population less than 3,000. So this is for our little guys. Love this grant, it's really great. We also did a show about this a couple of months ago in August. So we have a lot more details about that, you can go there. Um, it does require a match, so you do have to match one-to-one -one for that. So if you ask for a grant for a project that costs a total Total of thousand dollars, the grant can give you five hundred, and you would have you would have to come up with the other five hundred from somewhere in your community or in your budget. 
Um, there are three different grants available through this fund. Uh, two of them are, you need to be an accredited public library here in Nebraska. And this is this one, this is a grant that is for Nebraska libraries. Um, there is an enhancement grant and a facilities grant. Enhancement grants which should do new programs, up, um, improve services, things like that, and facilities, things about your building. And self um, the third grant is a planning grant and is in a planning for accreditation grant. And this is for if you are not an accredited library here in Nebraska right now, you can get funding to help you get reach that um, accreditation. So if you need to have, be paid extra, need extra staff time to work on your accreditation or um, work on creating your community needs response planning or purchase a, a service or upgrade your computers or internet or um, buy ebooks, whatever you might need to reach accreditation, you can apply for a planning grant through this um, fund. And this is done through the Nebraska Community Foundation. Um, I'll also mention while we're talking about this specific grant, uh, look in your local communities to see if they have worked with the Nebraska Community Foundation to create other funding resources for you or your municipality. Um, they're all over the state. But this specific one is specific to Nebraska public libraries um, in communities with a population 3,000 or less. Um, and all the information you need here is available. Now this one did just close for this year, unfortunately. The short applications were due October 1st. Um, so uh, at the moment, uh, there we go. Uh, it's not open right now, it just closed, but keep an eye on it for next year. It, this has the same schedule every year. The short form applications do always do October 1st of any year. And then um, the team of people, it's actually short, Shirley Crates Bennett, the one who's the founder of this grant. Uh, her nieces and nephews, along with me as the um, participant from the commission, we get together and dis um, discuss the short applications and then we are invited to submit a longer application that will be due in the spring. So highly recommend it for all our little guys um, and look for it for next year. Uh, the Nebraska Department of Economic Development has Quite a few grants that you wouldn't maybe think about that that libraries can apply for as well. You can see them a few times on the list, my list here. Um, the Community Development Block Grants and the Civic and Community Center Financing Fund are two um, through that department that uh, libraries are actually mentioned in in both of those that um, could receive funding. And I know we have libraries that have done both of these. Uh, the CDBG one, everybody has to have an acronym. <laughs> Uh, there it goes. Uh, all the information you need um, is here on this web page. It does require a match, and I have that. So here on this page, I got some basic, quick information for you about each of these grants, just to give you a, sh a short idea of what it might be like before you go into the main page for each particular grant to get all the details. So it does have a 25% match. Um, they do state that this is for public libraries who have been accredited through the Library Commission, so you need to be accredited to apply for this one. Um, and they consider libraries under their public works section. When you look on their website, you will see there is lots of different opportunities, different grants, um, downtown revitalization, emergent threat, et cetera, et cetera. But they mention libraries under their public works. This one did also just close for this year, but it's an every year thing, so you can look for it again um, next year. But if um, if you want to know more about this grant, though, if you scroll down on this page, they do have all the grant application guidelines available here for the current year. So you can check and see what is the what would be in a public works application that I could do. Here's a web they have a webinar about it here, and then they have the actual guidelines here. So you can plan ahead and see for next year. If I do want to apply for one of these, what do I need to know? What do I need to put into this grant? What kind of requirements are there? What would I need to, what could I potentially put in here um, for my particular um, application for my library? So um, definitely take a look at that one from the Dep uh, Department of Economic Development. Also, the Civic and Community Center Financing Fund is another one, um, just a slightly different. This is to, as it says here, for actual construction. So community facilities that they mentioned, libraries would be considered a community facility. Your, um, your municipality itself would actually apply for this. So the city, you'd have to work with your city on this one. They would apply for this, um, um, and then it could be for the, would be for the library. Um, 
it is also has cost sharing um, match. It's can't the grant can't account for more than 50% of the project costs. So as a minimum, you're going to need to um, do 50. Um, it may be more depending on how much money you may be able to uh, come up with yourself in your community. So this is also Department of Economic Development, and they have the same kind of information on here as their other grants, how to apply, overviews, the awards. This one um, is actually coming up. This one is when you can look at and into applying right now, and now would be a good time to start looking at it because the um, first uh, letter of intent date is actually January 2021. So this would be something for next year to be to look into. So this one is available right now for you to apply for. Um, as you can see, some of these grants that's something you have to look at as well when you're looking at grants is how often are they offered. Some of them are only like as you can see for these from the state once a year. It's a once a year deal. You got to wait till next time. Some of them, uh, some of these grants, and you'll see some that I'll talk about in a, in a minute here, will accept applications or requests for funding throughout the year. So at any time you come up with an idea of something, if you if it fits into one of their criteria, you can shoot out an application to someone at any time. So this one right now, you can apply for it. Start start looking into um, how you would apply for it, and you've got all your information here about the application guidelines. They got a sample. I love this when they do these things. A template for the letter of intent, because if you're not sure what the heck that means and what I should say in that, they've got an example for you. Example of an application. Um, even their own tips for putting together a successful application. Um, definitely look for at each grant of what their criteria are, what they're looking for. They're going to tell you somewhere on their information. This is what our priorities are. This is what we're really into. Or we require that you make sure you mention this, mention that your city is struggling in this area, or mention that you're going to highlight diversity and this is what your project is about, or our project is about children because the, whatever this grant is, is is more into resources for children and youth. You know, pay attention to what they're telling, they um, say in their grants. So Department of Economic Development, great resource here in Nebraska too. Uh, another one for construction and facilities, if you're, your building needs work, a USDA community facilities grants and loans. This is one that's slightly different. It has both grants available where it's just grants, it's just money you get. Loans is just like any loan you've gotten yourself, you get the money and then you do have to repay it in some way back to them. So they have two options for you depending on what might work best for you. And this is from the U.S. Department of Agriculture. So this is from the USDA. So this is from the um, federal United States government. But this is, as you can see here, specifically for Nebraska. So it's the USDA Rural Development um, Department in Nebraska. So this is from the federal government, but local to us. That makes sense. <laughs> um, this is one that is open all the time. As you can see, it is open. They've got in links here for you where you can apply. Um, what all the requirements are. They have a fact sheet all about it, which is a great resource. They have it in Spanish if you need that. Um, they have a, um, lots of detailed information about their grant. So uh, this is for specifically for rural, because this is for the USDA rural development. Um, this is in rural areas. And uh, they their criteria of who can apply is public bodies, community-based nonprofit corporations, uh, federally recognized tribes. That's all of you municip municipal libraries out there in your cities and your villages and towns. That's you. And this is also for smaller, uh, as I said, rural. For them, the cutoff for rural is uh, no more than 20,000 residents. That's almost everybody in Nebraska, all, all areas of Nebraska practically, uh, besides Lincoln, Omaha, and the larger cities. Uh, so uh, this would be almost anybody in the state would be able to apply for this one. And they do mention here, there we go, libraries for them are under educational services, museums, libraries, or private schools. So dig deep, dig into these grants and see where are they mentioning libraries? What are they thinking of libraries at? as. In this case, they're thinking of them as education. So this would be kind of a grant to apply for that is related to education, doing some sort of training um, in, and or workshops or something with your library that would relate to that. 
uh, either a program that you're doing, updating your library if you need to update, maybe a community meeting room to be able to provide educational services. Um, what we're, what's, ha with what's happening now, update your ability to do virtual education, virtual training and, and workshops and sessions. Do you need new webcams? Do you need uh, ring light? That's a new cool thing everybody needs to have. Uh, do you need better internet service to be able to broadcast these, re these services, um, these programs out? Got to start thinking creatively with what we are, what's going on now. Um, so this is a great one through the U.S. government, specific to Nebraska. Now here we start getting into some things that you may know about, you may not, uh, may have heard of yourself. Uh, that just get a little creative. These are ones that some libraries have applied for and have been very successful with. Uh, the railroad, railroads here in Nebraska, railroad, well, Midwest, everywhere, railroads are everywhere. It's how, how business is done still. Uni, both Union Pacific and um, Burlington Northern have grant opportunities available that um, libraries would be able to apply for. Uh, you are a 501c3 public charity, as the Union Pacific Foundation uh, describes it you would um, be able to apply for this. You need to be in a community served by them. You know, it's for both of these, um, they, they, they are trying to support the communities where they go through, where their railroads go through. So for both of these, you need to be at where they are. And I put links here so you can quickly find it because I had to dig a little. The um, maps showing here is where, uh, what is this one? Union Pacific, where they uh, had do business. And there's Nebraska, a whole bunch of, Areas right through there that could apply for this one. Uh, for uh, the NSF, same thing. They have a map here showing where their um, there we go, where their roots go. Same thing. Lots of lines in, in Nebraska. So if you are anywhere on these maps and either one of these for each, either one of these railroads, that you would be eligible to apply for their grant programs and their. Uh, both pretty um, similar, just you know, two different roads. Uh, Union Pacific actually does mention libraries. They uh, have different funding priorities, and under community spaces is what they consider libraries as. So um, I've got a link here to their priorities. Um, here, there's a link through application process, grant criteria. That's what you've got to look at in here. But they have a, a bunch of different. Um, causes that they have here. They call their funding priorities objectives, safety, workforce development. Um, but for libraries, that's community um, spaces is where they consider libraries under. And you can see it here, there it is right in the top one. Create, sustain, or expand upon artistic and cultural experiences offered to a broad and diverse audience, museums, theaters, libraries, concerts, lectures, etc. So for this grant, that's the kind of thing you'd be thinking of, some sort of program that is cultural or artistic or um, you know something you're doing for your community. So, or something you do need to do to you know, do construction in your library. You can get, you know, reach out to them and ask about what they want made to do so you know this is what they're thinking of is cultural experiences artistic and cultural experiences previous grant was education just you know see what they're talking about and the uh, bnsf railway foundation they've got their information here how to apply their policies and programs all listed there um, they do a lot of um they do a lot of different philanthropic work a lot of these um, foundations and groups do um, but specifically for libraries, um, look at their policies, their criteria. Um, that basically, you need to be just like the other one, close and um, nearby to where they do business and nonprofit tax exempt organizations. Uh, that's public libraries to pretty much to a T. <laughs> so, both of those are really good resources, support the railways um, in the community. Uh, and anybody have any questions yet? Do you have any questions or comments? If you've applied for any of these and you want to share anything about it, let us know. Type in the questions section there. Uh, and um, share what you've done. If you had any good, bad experiences with any of these or any other ones that you want to let other libraries know about. <laughs> so uh, next I have on here is some uh, private foundations. Uh, lots of people, and that's actually the, the Kreitz Bennett grant was also the same kind of thing. An individual um, passed on and she had uh, money and decided to give it to 
use it in a charitable way and use the Nebraska Community Foundation to run her um, grant program. Uh, other uh, individuals have come up with their own. <clears throat> the Peter, yeah, Peter Hewitt Foundation. Um, this is also 513, 501c3 status or be a unit of government in Nebraska. That's a public library. Um, and this is one that, as you know, some of the other ones had deadlines and dates when you had to apply by and then they have passed. They um, do quarterly, so they will regularly be looking at what you want to apply for. So this is the one at any time you want to put in an application to their uh, foundation. And as they go, you know, they're always on a rolling basis looking at these applications. They have information about impact areas, the specific things that they are interested in. Um, giving money towards youth, economic growth, thriving places, and you can look for more information about all of these. Excuse me, in there uh, on their website, so you can see the kind of things that they are looking at. Enable youth. So this is something that may be great. I, this kind of jumped out at um, maybe for libraries. Uh, enable youth, particularly vulnerable youth, to access the programs and services they need to repair, be prepared for academic, personal, and professional success. That just screams libraries to me. <laughs> uh, out of school time programs, so that be community programs, things are after school programs, libraries are doing here under Cradle to Clear and Career Alignment. So uh, look at theirs. They have information about the application process, FAQs, and you can even see also, which is great for some of these, definitely look for this as well on a lot of these. And this one that's just jumped out at me here what grants they have already offered here they've got you can search the past five years you can see what kind of things they are um giving grants for which have been successful so if any of these grant programs do offer that look and see what other people have applied have applied and received funding for and then you'll know the kind of things that they are really like and you can see here um related to libraries stem lots of libraries doing stem programming now youth development youth pathways to success um so all of those could be things that may have something library related to do it. Um, and you can see they have different types of grants depending on what you want to do too. Events, uh, cap, um, capital, you need um, programs. So it's kind of very, uh, lots of different things that you can look into there. Ah, cool. ah, and we do have a comment from someone. Cool, thank you, Donna. Um, Ah, yes, the USDA and the CCCFF, that's the, uh, there we go, Civic and Community Center Financing Fund. <laughs> um, she says, uh, Donna Cruz says, they are, as grant staff are very easy to work with. Yes, I know, I've talked to people who've worked definitely with the USDA one and that they are just, you know, they got this money, they want to get it out, they want to help you be successful. Um, but a reminder for the federal grants, she says that they have more thorough applications and reporting needs. That is definitely something to pay attention to with all of these. If you um, need to make sure you have the time or the staff to help you, or a volunteer, or a board member, someone who can help you keep up with these grants potentially, um, because there will be the application itself to submit. Sometimes you have to put up a whole budget of here's how we're going to make this work. Here's what the um, matches that we the match that we're doing um, that we've come up with, and then there may be follow up reporting throughout the life of the grant at the end of the grant. Um, and it's all going to vary from organization to organization. Uh, definitely federal ones, I would say, are probably the most strict and have the most reporting and reports and application um, and things that you need to do and keep up with. Uh, here at the Library Commission, we do have follow-up reports for all of our grants, too. Not, I hopefully, hopefully not too scary, but we do want to know how'd you do, did it, was it a success? Um, but yeah, definitely look into what they, they may be asking for you. That's a good tip, Donna, definitely, that, you know, look into what the reporting is and seeing are you going to be able to keep up with these particular grants. Uh, so the next one we have here, <coughs> excuse me, is the Robert B. Doherty Foundation. Uh, same kind of thing as the Hewitt one, um, tax-exempt organizations in Nebraska with their libraries. And they do um, grants throughout the whole year. So at any time you want to, you can just, you know, just whatever you're thinking of, there's no deadlines as they say right here. Anytime you um, come up with an idea, submit a grant to them, and they'll just be constantly reviewing them and deciding on um, what funding they may um, give out. 
they have lots of different types of grants too. This is something to pay attention to as well in, in grants is what time frame are these for? Is it a one shot deal, a pro, a one thing, pro, one year, you know, it's just for a specific event this year? Uh, is it a multi year thing because it's a huge project? Is it for construction specifically in this case, capital campaigns? Um, in this case, they do offer um, if you want to do a challenge or matching grants. Uh, this, so they have a um, mixture of them of we'll just grant you the money or if you want to do a match where if you have matching funds available or if you can get your community real really revved up for donate bake sales etc cetera, etc cetera, for um, the match that we can then you know show them that we have a community support so much community support for this grant um, and you'll see also you'll see on some of these private definitely on these private foundations I noticed this a lot on ones I looked at what they will not make grants for so pay attention to that as well uh, most of it does not apply to our to libraries so that I, I think it's okay um, but do pay attention if there's things they won't do don't you know waste you know you don't want to waste your time on something that you wouldn't be able to apply for so the Dario Foundation, this is good for, as I mentioned, your um, startup programs, capital campaigns, construction, if you need something done, um, you know, another facilities type um, grant. And what's great about all these grants, too, is you can apply for multiple ones. Apply for as many as you have the time and the energy um, and the capability to, to, to do. If you can only get a certain amount of money from... Um, you know the Crates Bennett grant that you only ask for you know part of your um, application from there and then part from one of the foundations that's okay you know if you have a huge project you need a new library building or something do multiples that's okay you can have funding you don't have to say just to one foundation we need a hundred thousand dollars or we need half a million dollars to build this new building or whatever it is that you need parse it out to each one of them um, and break it up that way and uh, Maybe you'd be you know, more successful with some of the uh, oops, smaller ones that way. Some of the grants do have limitations on how much they will grant out as well to a live, to an organization um, or each year. So that's something to pay attention to, that there may be a maximum you can ask for. But that's okay. Go somewhere else and make it up there. Another grant um, organization that I found that um, is for uh, great for construction pro projects is the Sunderland Foundation, and this is they're actually based out of Kansas, uh, but they will give grants to any um, nonprofits who are. Um, this is an individual um, who started up this Ash Grove Cement Company, and they do business across a lot of states in the Midwest and Midwest and Western a part of the country. So any states that they do business in nonprofits in those states are eligible to apply for their grants. Um, this is an annual one, um, so it does have its own deadlines and things. And you can see they do have, I think, is it this one here? The different areas that they do, um, that they got, you know, the other grants called it funding priorities or um, focus they all use different wording but they have the different funding areas higher education so um they do community colleges so this one is good for academics academic libraries if you need um public universities even private colleges anything they do higher education uh human services arts and culture that's where libraries come in for them you can see here they have granted one to they list here specifically kansas city public library durham museum here in omaha Nebraska. Um, so libraries would fall under their arts, public libraries would fall under their arts and culture, uh, academic libraries under education, higher education. So look at their different um, areas. Now they also do list here the same thing, the grants that they have awarded for um, the last few years here. So I looked at these and they've got their civic grants for, for organizations. You can see here different cities and whatnot. Um, and you do have to you know, think about what you're applying for here. This one you can see here, Friends of the Winthrop Library in Winthrop, Washington. So a friends group got a hundred thousand dollar grant from them. Not sure what for, but um, but if you scroll down under cultural grants, that's where a lot of the libraries start popping up. Um, Fort Worth Museum of Science History, Friends, let's see where's some Children's Museum, uh, Dorothy Brothers, Dorothy Brownledge Public Library. So you see these are kind of things that are more library related here. Museums, Kansas City Public Library. Not the, not the one that I'd seen here before. But, hmm. 
and then the education grants, here you go, to for our academics out there, community colleges, state colleges, private universities, all over across the board here, and in any state where they do, as I said, where they do business. And I do believe I did have, go back up here. There it is. They do have a map too. The blue states is where they are, um, where um, people will be eligible for. So Midwest, and then looks like they jumped over and expanded up into the Pacific Northwest area, Western and Pacific Northwest. So any of those states would be eligible for this one. So definitely for construction, and if you're a nonprofit, this would be on, as you can see, all the large, large grants that they did give out through there. <clears throat> And now, oh, let me fix that there. There are also things like and um, the Dollar General Literacy Foundation, Dollar General, and I've just got that one here because I love the literacy part of it here, and as well as the Pilcrow Foundation doing um, books to ch for children. Um, but there are grants from Walmart, Target. Uh, I know in the past, uh, Best Buy and Lowe's did grants. Um, I'm not sure what their programs are at right now. They seem to be defunct, but. Um, Definitely look into all these local, these you know national companies, but locally. If you have one of them in your community here with Dollar General, you just need to be within 15 miles of a Dollar General store, and um, you're you're eligible. They have a um, right now five different uh, literacy related grants available: one for adult literacy, one for family literacy, one for youth literacy, a specific one for summer reading. So if you're looking into planning your summer reading programs for next year, that could be one for you. And then I've got one specifically for school libraries. So this is for those of you in your K-12 school, school library relief for libraries who have had um, struggling. Um, uh, and that one's called the Beyond Words Dollar General School Library Relief Program. So for the adult family and literacy, adult basic education, and uh, you see right now the they've done the 2020 grants, but just like the other one that we mentioned early, the 2021 grant applications will be available starting in January of next year. So these are ones to look at um, for future to see what I want to do next year. So you've got your adult literacy, your family literacy programs, your youth literacy programming, uh, summer reading, as I mentioned, and then the uh, for school libraries recovering from uh, disasters, so things like uh, you know tornadoes, floods, it, the things that we get here in the Midwest, um, hurricanes. If you're in other areas, um, and this is done in conjunction with um, the American Association of School Librarians, so they are working with them for the correct kind of um, resources and things that school library would need. So this one is great for public and um, academic or public and K-12 libraries, um, the Dollar General Literacy Foundation. And like I said, look into, I know other libraries have done Target and uh, as I mentioned, Target and Walmart. Um, is there any other local organizations, or local businesses like that you guys know of? Let me know. The Pill Crow Foundation is also a great resource as well. This one gives actual books specifically to rural public libraries. So this is another one for our little, little libraries, just like what Nebraska is full of. Um, rural communities, and this one, they have to have a population under 10,000. And they even mention, and this is wording from their website, give priority to ones even smaller under 5,000. So if you are 5,000 or less, uh, you are at the top of the list for um, uh, this grant, the Pilgrim Foundation. And they have two different types of grants programs that they have. They have what they call their Children's Book Project Grant, which um, you have to come up with um, funding from your friends, the library group, local sponsors um, for part of the grant, and then they will make a match to that. That's just for children's books for your library. And then they have a disaster relief grant specifically for anyone who's come, you know, suffered from a recent disaster in your in your community um, and other any sort of natural disaster. And this is, you know, a, a limited number of grants there for this one for and it's a special grant that they do, you know, as needed basically. If there's been like last year we had the flooding, which I know some libraries are still recovering from. Uh, oh, and the in the western part of the country with all the fires in California. So um, 
this is actually uh, years ago if anyone ever heard of the, the Libri Foundation did put out did grants and I found information about them as well they are no longer doing that but this foundation has taken over what they had been doing which is just getting actual books so if you need books for your library this is for you so if you're trying you know that's a huge cost and um, materials to libraries it's you know, Yes, you need the books for the kids, for the adults. Um, so this is when to specifically get those books in your hands and um, for our rural communities. Yeah, there we go. So we have the Children's Book Project, and they've got information about both of their rural public library grants here. Uh, I'll jump to the and you can see here who they have given a or it's the same thing who they've given grants to previously so you can see if there's any communities here you'd want to reach out to them ask their input uh, what did you do how did it go you could I'm sure you know libraries we like to help each other would be able to talk to any of these about what they're uh, they have done And they do, they're, they're really great here too. You know, sometimes you talk about this one-to-one -one match in grant programs, or grant grants. I always wonder, well, how much is it going to be really? I've got to come up with an amount. I've got to figure out how much this project might cost. And this one, I like that they have given, they, they specifically say you need to have somehow contributed $200 to $400 um, for the purchase, up to um, $1,200 of the cost of these books. So they give you a number. So it's going to be a two to one match. You'll raise this much and we'll give you um, a match to go along with that. Uh, they're doing a special project for the or Oregon. Um, so that's just a special thing for them. And then the disaster relief grant program. This is just a special one, as I mentioned, um, floods, other natural disasters. You can get up to, um, you can select $800 worth of books. So that was something to apply for if you have um, suffered from anything related to that, related to any sort of national disaster, bleh, nat natural disaster <laughs> that your library community may have suffered from. So looking for books, definitely um, uh, recommend them. Now back to the grants page. Now, talking about books, another one that I just thought of that I should add to, like I said, this is a work in progress, this page. Um, first book, has anyone worked with them before? The first book? Uh, we did a grant project along with them. They give discounts to uh, libraries to, you can get great, um, they don't have grants, but they give um you can purchase books through them at a great discount. This is new um, books. You just sign up for an account with them, and uh, they you can just you log into their marketplace, their first book marketplace, low cost books and educational resources. It's actually got materials and things too, you know, like crayons, markers, coloring books, things like that. Uh, so if you are looking for books, this isn't this is kind of off topic for us, but related because I, you know, it's related to the books part. Highly recommend using them. You can get books for like a couple of dollars that from them, which may cost you ten, twenty, thirty dollars going through Amazon or something like that. So take a look at them. They just did a grant project for the first time last year that we worked with them on. So maybe they'll do another one. We'll see. And then, um, so that, that's just some of the highlight ones, some special ones that I brought up. And of course, there is IMLS, Institute of Museum and Library Services. They are the ones right now with the CARES Act grant. They're, they, they got money from the, the first CARES funding um, stimulus package for libraries, um, but lots of other um, resources there through IMLS. And what's great about theirs is they do specify, do you have specific grant programs for small libraries, for rural libraries, for tribal libraries. So um, pay attention to what they are offering and what may fit your library. Um, here's the most recent grant one they've got, Accelerating Promising Practices for Small Libraries. Um, and they do, they seem to have a lot more, I think sometimes for museums, but, um, Community Catalyst, Community Catalyst Initiative for museums and libraries. 
Um, as I said, they had the CARES Act grants. We did get funding here at the Library Commission for um, from them for CARES Act. We've already issued those grants. Um, so that has been done so far. Uh, hopefully with new stimulus packages that will come up. I know there are parts in some of them that are going through the the, fed, the legislature right now, the, the federal legislature, that um, libraries and museums and IMLS is mentioned. They've, there's money set in there for that. Hopefully we'll have more, we'll see. Um, here we go, Native American, Native Hawaiian Museum and Library Services. Um, and these are things that are throughout the year, they have different um, deadlines for each of them. So you have to look at them to see when each one is, is is um, has this deadline national leadership grants for libraries so imls this is getting money from the federal government so rather than um, all these other ones which was mainly talking about some you know local foundations um, local organizations uh nebraska specific uh, agencies imls that's going to the federal government so this is just some of the ones, like I said, there are so many grants and loans uh, opportunities out there. It's impossible to have them all here, but these are just some ones that I know libraries have applied for here in Nebraska that I know have been successful and that are really um, generally local to either Nebraska or Midwest. So I just wanted to highlight those. Uh, let me know if you have any others you think would be good. We'll get them on here. Uh, to help you expand your horizons and find even more opportunities, though, I do have some resources here because I can't list them all on this um, on my web page here. So we link out to some other places where you can go and get even more resources and more information. Uh, some of you may have heard of the Foundation Directory. It is uh, a uh, big, well, the, the actual physical book is a big, fat, heavy hardcover book that some libraries have. Um, there's an online version of it that you have to pay for. Sometimes um, universities will have that. Some larger libraries may have a subscription to that. Um, but it, it, it can cost. If you don't have access to it, it's hard to, to find. I believe we have a copy of it here in our Library Commission collection, but you'd have to come here to use it. I'm not sure if it's check outable. I'd have to check circulates. But here in Nebraska, our, again, here, there, again, the Department of Economic Development has compiled their own foundation resource directory. And this is um, foundations not just in Nebraska, but outside of Nebraska as well. And gives a lot of basic information about um, all these. So this is kind of like the same thing as the foundation directory that you've heard of before, but done by our Depart um, Department of Economic Development and just free and open out there for anybody. Click on the link there, and this is the most recent one, it is 2019, a guide for grants for Nebraska children, youth, families, and communities. And you'll see here, and I'm just going to scroll to the head, it just starts listing all these uh, foundations. And you'll see as I scroll through this, it has got one, two, three, <laughs> five pages of listing of foundations that you, that, um, could be useful too. Now this is, as I said in the title, it's for families, children, and communities. Um, there's a little index here that explains if you're whatever, um, and this is great too, depending on what you're doing in a civic program at Southern like Children and Youth, all the different foundations that would have grants that would um, be for that particular um, focus. So children and youth for libraries, civic programs. Culture, libraries definitely could fall under that. Diversity education etc cetera, etc cetera. and if we get past all of these lists and do we have yeah libraries there it is they list libraries here and um so you'll see some other ones here like i said I, it's hard to list all of them um but here's some more that would be in here in this foundation directory but as you know as we saw sometimes it doesn't say <clears throat> necessarily libraries in the uh, grant descriptions or the grant um, app, or guidelines. So you just have to think, is it something for the municipality? Is it about community development and that the library is involved in? So you got to think creatively. Don't just limit yourself just to, oh, it doesn't have the word library in it. And you'll see here, I'll just show you basically, this is just the kind of basic info they give, basic contact info, what this, uh, the general purpose of this particular grant, what it's for, what they de determine is their particular fields of interest. As you see, this one, education, and art libraries could fall into those easily. Well, the library's doing so many wellness program things now with story walks and um, food programs and things like that. You do lots of work with disadvantaged children, helping them with after school programming, uh, uh, summer programming. So right there is one you could definitely apply for. 
uh, and then just links to the grant pages themselves. So great resource to find even more um, ideas and, and resources for funding. There is a library grants blog. If you if you actually do a like a use your search engine of choice and type in grants for libraries, this is one you'll probably see that comes up. Uh, it is um, announcements of various grants, usually large things from ALA, IMLS, things like that. So if you are wondering what's coming up, and some of these you'll recognize from me sending out the same ones. Like I know I shared about this one, the libraries transforming communities focus on small and rural libraries. That right there at the top of the page jumps right out for us. <laughs> Uh, open right now, deadline December 2nd. This is done by um, Stephanie Gerding. She is an author of actually this book here, Winning Grants, Second Edition, How to Do It Manual for Librarians. It's an ALA book. Um, but so if you want you know, tips and tricks on like how to do grants, that would be a book to um, get a hold of. But then she has this blog where she is just posting regularly just announcements of different kinds of grants that might be available. There's a bunch of ALA ones, Captain Planet Foundation, uh, Grants for unpublished rich writers, StarNet, STEAM equity projects. So she's got all sorts of things here. So um, a good thing to just check in regularly and see what uh, she may have discovered and is pushing out here. But this is definitely for the more of the bigger ones like ALA, PLA, uh, IMLS. That's the kind of things that she's um, generally um, pushing out here. So not the small local foundations and things. This would be for more of the big ones. But um, great resource for um, keeping an eye on those things. Now, ALA, American Library Association, and Public Library Association, and all of their different um, divisions and organizations, there is a gigantic list, is the only way I can describe it, of um, grants that they just collect links to these various things. Um, there's also other things you can look at, scholarships, awards, and things, but they've, I've got this to just go directly to just grants. Now, this is a huge list because it is for grants you can apply for, um, ALA Presence Award for Advocacy, um, all, just alphabetic, all sorts of different ones. You can do, you can do type of grant programs. Uh, you can just look at a certain unit of ALA if you want to. You know, you, I just want ones from the school section or whatever. Note, however, here, some of them say historical in their title. That means these are grants that are no longer being offered. Um, so this is a collection of grants currently open and previous ones that um, were available and just aren't um, open now, but it guess has a link to their page with information about it. So just pay attention as you're going through this. But it is, yeah, a long, long list of all sorts of different kind of grants that you can um, look into. So definitely recommend taking a look at that for more. Um, Grant Watch is something that I've signed up for myself, actually, just to see what's going on. And I should open that up. I'll show you that. Um, where you go? This is where you can you have to sign up for an account, but it doesn't cost you anything, and then you can get them to send you a weekly remind a weekly um, newsletter, weekly email of grants in your certain in that meet your criteria <clears throat> specifically of whatever you want to um, be looking into. I'm trying to find my most recent one. I know I had one that came to me. There it is. There we go. So this is what I, I just went to their website, created myself a little quick account, and then said, I want to know anything happening in Nebraska. So now about once a week, an email that is the Nebraska.GrantWatch, and it's just specifically links to um, any grants that it is gathered in, and found out about in Nebraska, or for that would be um, libraries, organizations in Nebraska would be eligible for. So these are grants in Nebraska and Western Iowa, nonprofits, um, in eligible locations to improve quality of life for local residents. So this is economic development community programs. That's definitely libraries. Uh, schools, nonprofits, K-12. So there's one for classroom materials for schools. Um, responding to community needs. That's what our libraries do. Tribal. So um, they have all sorts of things. So you can get this kind of an uh, a, uh, email sent to you regularly. You can search here too if you want to on your own, but if you go to sign up, and I'll just show you, all you do is give an email address, choose your country and state, and then um, they will start sending you things that are in your area. So you'd pick Nebraska, you'd pick Iowa, 
New Jersey, wherever you're at, and then they'll start sending you the specific grant watch email um, for your area. As I said, you do have to create an account and ID with them, but it's not that it costs anything to just you know, get these emails sent to you to give you an idea of what's coming up. There are lots of resources like that out there where you can get, get information like that. Um, there's also, and this last one over here, we're almost, we're a little over 11 o'clock, that's okay, we started a little late, so I'm just gonna wrap up these last couple of things here. Um, Specific grant opportunities for K through 12 schools. This is from the Transforming Education Through Technology Journal. They post links for specifically for K-12. So if your school um, grants, and they do a weekly here of, of, of grants, so they have it as a regularly posted. Um, you see all these going back and back. Uh, COVID-19 grants, code games, core uh, micro grant program for educators and teachers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and here's ongoing ones. And now here's where you get into this creative American Honda Foundation STEM grants. Honda that is into STEM, great. Uh, learning and leadership grants from the National Education Association, Spark Fund for STEM, et cetera, et cetera. So in a lot of these, you can see ongoing, ongoing. You don't have a deadline coming up that you are a deadline you might have missed. You can just go right in and apply whenever you think of something or come up with an idea or you think you might need money for something. So definitely a great resource for those of you in your K-12 uh, schools. And the last thing I hear, in our Nebraska Access, uh, oh yes, great, another, um, <clears throat> A uh, tip from Donna, TechSoup. If you use TechSoup to do to buy technology or um, attend webinars or sessions, uh, they have a discount subscription to GrantStation, another one. GrantStation normally costs, which is $99 a year, but if you go through TechSoup, they will give you, um, it's also a directory of, of funding. Um, a database online, um, but you can, if you go through TechSoup to sign up for it, you would get, oh, 99 is a discounted price. I'm sorry, I misread that. 99 is actually what it would be discounted, and that would be the annual price for it, so way cheaper. So for some of these, I've been trying to give you some things that are free, um, wouldn't cost anything, but there are some, yes, that you can apply, you can sign up for um, that will cost you something, uh, either a, a monthly fee or an annual fee. And depending on if you're really trying to find money and, and get, it may be worth it to you to pay um, to keep up with these kind of things. GrantStation is great. If you can, if you just have $100 a year, $99, <clears throat> not $99 as Donna says, and as an investment in applying for potentially thousands and thousands of dollars of grants, probably worth it to look into. I will add a link to that, the GrantStation, um, Tech soup onto here potentially, yeah. I'm making notes. <clears throat> now we also have, as a, the last thing I was gonna mention, Nebraska Access is our databases that we offer through the Library Commission. However, we also have just resources here, just links um, that our, our library staff here, our reference staff here gather on all sorts of different topics. And this is our particular subpage in Nebraska Access for um, grant resources. Now this is not specifically, all of this is not necessarily for libraries, it's just grant resources in general, so there may be some things in here that are for um, individuals, governments, uh, municipalities, for other things as well. But we have a lot of um, helpful information here that um, elements, so we, we're working on your grants, elements of a grants proposal, uh, grants.gov through the federal government. So I didn't put everything onto that this grants page that I put together because we have this great gathering of a lot of them. I'm kind of trying to highlight some of the ones that you might not know about or the ones that I've, I've looked into and know, hey, these really jump out at me. But definitely look through here. Um, you'll see some things are duplicated here, our youth grants, the USDA grants, et cetera. Um, but you, you may found, find a lot of information here that may be uh, useful to you as well when you're working on your grants or looking for more grants. So keep an eye on that as well. So um, that's, our, that's our hour. We've reached a little about our hour time here. So um, anybody have any questions or comments about any of these? Any uh, thoughts on um, what I put up here? Any resources that you know of that you'd want to share? Um, any questions about any of these? I've looked into a lot of these, so um, 
rather than just listing here's all the everything that says grant the title i've kind of tried to investigate all of these to see how they work what they're like would a library be able to handle this one or or yeah okay just double checking my sessions here okay all right, so I hope this was uh, useful for our use, all of you. Um, got you some great ideas, trying to just bring attention to some of these ways that you can um, get some more funding for your library. As I said, this is a new page. It will maybe be tweaked a bit before it goes live live. It doesn't link to anything. Go to this URL, nlc.nebraska.gov slash grants slash grants.aspx. You do need that grants twice. Um, when the uh, recording is done, I'm going to finish the recording here. I'll um, include a, that link as well to you so you know that this is where to jump to for now for all this grant information. Any last minute desperate questions you want to ask of me? Type into the questions section there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right, so I think that will wrap it up for today. Thank you everyone for being here with me. I hope this was useful for you. Let me know if you do have any questions about any of this. Um, we have been recording the show. I'm gonna go back to our Encompass Live page here. Um, these are upcoming shows we have here. Keep an eye on the schedule. We'll be adding more into the open dates there. Our archives are listed here at the um, underneath our upcoming shows. Uh, the today's show will be at the top of the page here. We do have, or well, you can search our archives if you want to. You can search the full archives or just most recent 12 months. Uh, that is because this is our full archives for Encompass Life going back to when the show premiered, which was in January 2009. So we do have over 10 years worth of recordings here. Uh, so definitely do a search for topics you want. Just, just, I'm not going to scroll through all of it. That would be crazy. Uh, but as you are look, watching any of these shows, pay attention to the original broadcast date. Some of the information, um, some of this, there will be old information in here. Some of the information may be changed. Uh, services and products may work differently now. Links and URLs may no longer work because things have moved. Some things may no longer exist anymore. Some may have shut down or just don't, um, things don't work the same way. So do pay attention. Certain things will stand the test of time, like reading lists and things like that, uh, book club discussions. Uh, so just pay attention to when something was broadcast. If you do, do run a search on our archives here. Um, as soon as today's um, recording is ready, should be done um, before the end of this week. As long as GoToWebinar and YouTube cooperate with me, I will email all of you who attended today and everyone who registered for today's show directly to let you know that the recording is ready and available. For you. We also push it out on our various social medias, etc. Um, we do have a Facebook page for um, Encompass Live. If you do like to use Facebook to keep up with things, you see a reminder about today's show, um, where, uh, letting people know when they're recording the previous shows available. So we do post on here. We also do use, if you saw, um, Encump Live is our hashtag for the show, a little abbreviation there. So if you're on any other social media, uh, Instagram, Twitter, et cetera. Not sure where else our social media people are sending it out. Look for that as well. All right. So um, that will wrap it up for today's show then. Um, uh, thank you everyone for being here, as I said, and uh, keep an eye on our schedule there for our upcoming shows. And hopefully we'll see you on another episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye.